This is the Lydian Spin with Lydia Lunch and Tim Dahl, episode number 186, unbelievably. So, and Tim, this first story kind of reminded of you because you are a big uh, Super Bowl party hound. Well, that's, well, I'll explain it afterwards, but go ahead with your story. Yeah, 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 I love your Super Bowl parties. It's got nothing to do with the actual sporting event. It has everything to do with the after party. Vera Little allegedly stole $1.5 million in chicken wings from an Illinois school. And this is from the New York Post. And the opening line is, this, this is not the way to get ready for the Super Bowl. Can you repeat mm-hmm. that number? How much? Vera Little allegedly stole $1.5 million, $1. Dollars $1. In, chicken million wings. in chicken wings. Wow. Okay. I'm going to get to it. This is not the way to get ready for the Super Bowl. The food service director of an impoverished Illinois school district was charged with stealing $1.5 million of food, most of which was chicken wings. Vera Little, 66, allegedly began stealing from the Harvey School District during the height of COVID. And the thing is, the station, the news station reported that (laughs) she ordered about 11,000 cases of chicken wings for the district with school funds and took all of the poultry for herself. The thing is, the food was never brought to the school or provided to the students. And this is during the height of COVID. She got busted. Let's just say they found out when the school was three hundred thousand dollars over the budget (laughs) halfway through the school year. Now, it doesn't say uh, how she was making those chicken wings or she was selling them on the side. But I mean, there you go. Did you tell me where this was? I'm always curious. Uh, This is the Cook County, Illinois, Chicago. Chicago, Chicago, probably Chicago. Chicago is really in the it's news. coming second only to Florida well, this week. I, well, I mean, I mean, there's I have two stories in Chicago. Uh, there's one that was a chocolate bomb that exploded in this girl's face. Uh, Wait, what a chocolate bomb. Well, you know, you know, when you melt chocolate, she was she was trying to uh, make. Oh, yeah cookies and, you, and you, you have that double boiler because it'll burn the chocolate. So you have this you have like water. Anyhow, she didn't she had it too sealed and the water, that little inch of water underneath basically build up so much pressure that when she's like, hmm, that smells good, she's like looking over the chocolate, the whole thing exploded in her face. I mean, she almost lost her eyesight. She, they're like just oh. swollen shut for weeks. She, they're like, you probably won't see ever again. She just basically had scalding chocolate just ripped through her eyes, but she somehow managed. Now, all right, so that that's just like the light kind of. Well, wait, and what about the what about the gal who was throwing off a blowing off a confetti gun, and that went backward and blew into her face? Did you hear about that <laughs> genius act of genius? I, you know, it's uh, I, I learned the hard way this winter where I had a little um, bathtub clog, and and um, and I and I you know I put like Drano and stuff in there, and and oh and, no. Uh, I had this snake. Check this out. Uh, you know, it's just wear air uh, eye eye protection whenever you do any fucking thing like this. And I and the snake basically, you know, flew a glob of this fuck. Fortunately, oh. I, think it was, I think it was. I mean, it was still disgusting. It was probably like hair grossness, slime Adreno. mixed with Drano in my fucking eye. No, and, uh, you could have gone I, blind. And I and I was like, what do you do? And they're like, you know, the whole thing's like flush it immediately. And I basically flushed it for they say for 15 minutes just pouring water and my eye was swollen for a good day or two but then it it just kind of worked right this is certainly does not at all compete with your uh, near eye blindness yeah that was scary just just today i'm here in miami staying with my lovely friend cam and i lit a candle in her hotel room and when i blew it out a tiny piece of wax went right into my eye and i've never had that happen that you blow a candle out and the wax pops up I don't know, Tim. We're just too close. What can I say? I don't know, quote unquote. <laughs> I don't okay, know. Okay, well, here's well, a story. I don't mean to shock you. And this time it is out of Alabama. And I have to say, if I ran into this in a gas station, and we've been to many gas stations in our day together, I would have thought perhaps our the guest of this week, we'll announce her in a minute, might have been there before me. Random person finds dismembered male genitalia sitting in a gas station parking lot what the <laughs> hey the mobile oh police department in alabama oh. responded to a call monday that male genitalia had been found in an alabama gas station and witnesses found the human penis in the parking lot it located on the corner of navco road and mcveigh drive about 6 a.m right so they called the police and but the police aren't even investigating it as a murder nice. as an assault 
They believe that the penis belongs to a motorcycle driver who was involved in a fatal accident on a nearby interstate. Ah. And he just happened to have a flying penis. So they're just calling it what it is, you know, dead man no longer driving, I guess. Yeah, so it wasn't like the police found it like sort of like someone losing their keys at a bar, like dangling. Or, Whose keys are these? They weren't like doing that with like the genitalia. Whose are these? Any, anyone? Well, <laughs> the thing <laughs> is that the motorcyclist, he, um, you know, I guess he had lost control of his motorcycle and then he was thrown from his motorcycle and struck by multiple vehicles. And uh, they're still trying to locate the other drivers. But I wonder what else flew. Out. I just don't understand. Well, he, Penis he, can fly he, out. If he was at all aware, or if he could think from some other dimension right now, he's probably saying, I'm glad I fucking died. Well, let's put it this way. At least we neither of us got a penis in the eye in the last couple of well, weeks. Well, there you go. So I'm going back to Chicago. Another weird, uh, you know, you know, they've got a lot of snow. It's kind of it's very wintry there right now. Well, wait, wait, uh, just for a minute. Yeah. This week again. I mean, it's just yesterday, today. 1800 flights canceled some states minus 50 degrees oh, oh, well, snow in texas that, that, that's all. I, I was gonna hell? i was gonna touch that but but in chicago yep. a 96 year old female body was found in a freezer in a garage like one of those oh. meat freezers and it, it's very mysterious they're, they're investigating but basically some out-of-state tip Basically, like, uh, maybe check this garage for like a body, kind of so, just a normal family garage. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because the neighbors were like, well, there was there was no ninety six year old ever living there. Like, like what? they're like, what is even going on? But yes, there was a nine ninety six year old woman's body in a freezer in a garage in Chicago, and and no one, well, the Texans aren't saying anything, but no one, everyone says, just what the fuck. So going back to the freezing shit, I mean. Memphis, what a bad week they've had. I mean, with the Tyree Nichols, oh. which, which that that video was. Oh, uh, yeah. I, that's just Tyree Nichols, that's I, it's just, infuriating. It just, I, I don't even know where to, where to begin. I mean, uh, that, look, come on, still again and more. Black men have to die for being black men in a car, walking, running, or existing. Yeah, it's and uh, this time. This time, I mean, by other black men, and there was a white cop there. And he's nothing so far about him. Whatever. Well, they're, they're, they're going to go after everyone, including the uh, paramedics. All three of them are going to get sure. arrested because they just sat around and watched this guy yeah. die for for 20 fucking minutes. And this kid, Tyree, you know, he was a photographer. I think he was a little bit of a loner. He was like into skateboarding and stuff. So he was kind of like kind of like the outsider kid. And I don't know. I just these these bully cops. They they, they well, they murdered him. So uh, and, and I'm wondering about this. I'm wondering about this, actually. Tell me. Because because I'm not for the death penalty. But, you know, everyone's into states' rights, especially like the right wing, states' rights and all this shit. And and Tennessee has the death penalty. Uh, yep. Shouldn't these cops be on death row? I mean, I mean, hello, be, be totally consistent. You know, I mean, why not? I mean, that's what Tennessee yep. Tennessee's into the death penalty. So, I mean, these people, these cops murder this guy. So they should be up for it, I guess. Whoa. Uh, Lydia right now for the listeners has a rat in her hand and she's flashing it to me. So uh, there you I'm go. cuddling my good friend Cam's. Oh, well, yes. Cam has a, uh, Naked a, rat. Rat, a rat collection, which I've I've definitely. Well, this is witnessed. a hairless one who seems yes. to have become very fond of me and uh, cannot help but to cuddle me. So I'm going to go with it. And, and, you know, uh, Cam, period bomb, uh, Kras lives, but also studying archaeology and digging up what she showed me yesterday that, she, that has been just found on the site that she's um, excavating was a petrified penis. I mean, we just can't get away from it. That's all that I know. But anyway, yeah, that, there you go. Petrified petrified penis. But I, I, I like the alliteration, too. I, I mean, oh, by the way, going back to the, the, the free. So, yeah, Me Memphis has that the terrible thing with Tyree Nichols. And then they get this winter blast. 400 car accidents uh what? <laughs> I, I mean well just in the nation just over like 24 hours of all this it, it's basically out of control um let's see what else here uh did you hear about the toddler that was mauled by the uh mountain lion in uh half moon bay just uh or just south of it in california well they can't blame that on mr ps one no mr. no no it's, it's not that it's, it's not that one it was just some kid frolicking in his backyard and the cat, I mean, maybe maybe because the kid was small enough to thought, you know, that, you know, cats before they're about to pounce, their eyes get really oh big. My. And then it just leaped on the kid. I think he's going to live. 
Um, now look, anyway, Tim, you were talking about the death penalty. And so I don't know oh, yes. how we never discuss what our what our topics are on these intros. But it brings me right up to my next story, which is just and also kind of <laughs> the death penalty method, right, for killing people in ancient Rome. Do you know anything about this? You knowing most things about all things having to do with the here, the now, or history. I'm wondering if you know what the penalty was for patricide in ancient Rome. Oh, that I definitely do not know. I, I want to know, though. Would you like a little education? All right. Well, you know, ancient Rome, they had all kinds of ways of killing people, you know, uh, throwing people off mountains, strangulation. But a popular and a popular one was throwing one actually off this 80 foot high cliff. So people would just, you know, tumble down and die. But if you happen to commit patricide, uh, the uh, you know, murdering one's own father, father yep. a very particular method of execution. It was known as the poena colie, which in Latin means the penalty of the sack. And it involves the convicted father murderer being put into a sack with several live animals and then having the sack thrown into the <laughs> river. <laughs> now, Okay, that's, so at first it was just a sack of comical, snakes. Comical, I have to say. I mean, you wouldn't want First it, it was but... just a sack of snakes, but the Romans being the Romans had to up it a bit. And eventually there was a dog, a chicken, a monkey, and a snake. Now, I remember that I was given the key to Palermo. <laughs> you and were? if I recall, there's a dog, an eagle, and a snake on there. And I'm just wondering if there's any correlation between this form of taking out the patricidal murderers and the key to Palermo, I can't say, I'm sure. You were given the key to Palermo. I never knew that story. Well, Tim, you can't miss me. There's two things you didn't know today. You learn something new every time you're here with me on the Lydian Spin, including the fact that I am cuddling Necky, a hairless like, rat. A hairless rat. I mean, I, I think it's very say, cozy. You have calmed it down quite a bit. I mean, it is an absolutely, absolutely cozy right here. Now, I was watching last night with Mr. Keckler a special on Tasmanian devils. And, oh, yes. you know, they're, they screech. Yeah, they, they have make the strongest that jaw. Strongest jaw of almost any animal. Yep. But if you want to befriend one, you have to grab it immediately and start cuddling it as I'm cuddling Necky over but here. I, but as and like a baby, down. as a baby, you're not going to do, you're not going to grab a yep. fucking adult. You know what, Tim, cuddling always calms me down. I don't know about you. And that kind of brings us up to our next guest. <laughs> okay. I don't know what should calm her down because I know she, like me, there's very little that we should fucking calm down about. And it's Russia of Pussy Riot, who has been staging a Pussy Riot against the powers that be, and especially Putin, for many a year now. And I'm very happy to have her on this, the 186th episode of The Lydian Spin with Lydia Lunch and Tim Dahl. This is the Lydian Spin with Lydia Lunch, Tim Dahl, and our very special guest from Pussy Riot, not only a published author, a video artist, a musician, but a pain, a big one, and Putin's freaking ass. Hello, darling. Introduce yourself. Hi. Uh, hi, I'm Masha Lechner from Pussy Riot, activist and artist. Yes. And you're currently in Lithuania right now in this... Uh... How much sunlight are you getting a day up there? Uh, well, I'm actually I'm moving all the time, so I'm going to Iceland, which is I think even less. Um, right. Look, yeah, there's yeah. more sun <laughs> anywhere than in a prison cell, for which you have spent more than enough time in. For being someone who's trying to trying to speak reason to bullshit power. Thank you. So uh, things have gotten, obviously you've had so much uh, attention with, with your activism, your performances, uh, just your existence since at least uh, you're on the international lens since you've been, I think, 22, 23 years old. Um, what really accelerated... You, I mean, you stayed in Russia, even though you kept on getting arrested and arrested and, and arrested. And keep going back to Russia. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. why why this time were you like, I'm out of here? Um, 
I'm actually do not uh, consider this situation that I'm actually out of there. I mean, physically, I'm now out of Russia, but uh, myself and a lot of members of our collective, we all have a hope to come back because Russia is our home. And now this is the most, I think, terrific time in, I mean, none of us uh, during all our life didn't expect that we will wake up and go to sleep with the news of the war, with the news of of endless blood and dead bodies and all of that making with a name of our country. This is the biggest disaster we ever can, you know, imagine. But uh, what we are doing now, we a touring with our concert right days and through our concerts we're raising money for children's children's hospital Ohmadid, uh which based in Kiev, it's Ukrainian hospital. So it's our small impact to make Ukraine war uh, win in this war. Uh because you, ha- you this have a, is... you have a you have a new video that's great called Mama Don't Watch TV, which is fantastic which shows some of the devastation of war. I mean, all your videos have been very political, but this one is so urgent right now because this war, like any fucking war, and there's many other wars around the world as well every day, and a lot of them exported from America, of course, is it's endless and it's heartbreaking. And who suffers most are, of course, the women and the children. So thank you for uh, donating to, I mean, those that suffer the most, the children. Thank you. So what about um, the other side? What about all your fellow Russians who don't want to be in the war and they're being recruited into the army or they're being thrown in jail? I mean, particularly the men. Who's who's the voice for them besides you? I mean, is there a voice in Russia that is opposed to this, that's actually being heard? So we have, it's very, unfortunately, it's kind of invisible or let's say less known in the West, but uh, it's almost every day we have new criminal cases against people who are actually against Putin and against the war. And prices like prison terms are much bigger than than ours. I I received in my life two uh, criminal cases. And let's say besides of this uh, two years term in prison, uh, a lot of like, hundreds of uh, classical arrests and uh, several several jail uh, terms. So in Russia, there are people, you, you probably know Alexei Navalny, who is one of the Russian opposition leaders who had like five or six criminal cases, almost endless term. Uh, but besides of him, there are, Ilya Yashin, for example, uh, Moscow local politician, or Alexandra Skochilenko, uh, a girl from feminist anti-war resistance, who is facing from five to ten years of jail because uh, of her action. She was changing a price tax in supermarkets, uh, putting bigger numbers uh, to uh, raising attention. And, uh, for example, she was changing like five uh, to 5,000 and she was writing like 5,000 people were murdered in Mariupol for what? Uh, Masha, let me just say this is let me just uh, allow the American people to know how ridiculous this, this is, because these are all preposterous imprisonments. But the last time I was in Moscow, somebody told me, oh, I just got out of prison for five years. I said, why? They said my band sounded like the seeds from the 1960s. This is how ridiculous, this is how petty it can be, much less if you are making any kind of political protest. And you're very lucky to have a public platform for this because so many people that are being incarcerated or disappeared don't have that. So thank you for that. Yes, I I, I I totally agree that that's why we as a Pussy Riot are trying to use our public voice to give more attention to those people who, who doesn't. And also we all now watching the 
terrific executions in Iran, which is the main, actually, supporter of Russia, the main importer of Iranian drones. So Russia is using Iranian drones now to ut- to attack Ukraine. They don't have any anyone who supports them except Iran or probably North Korea. But Masha, this is what's interesting, and this is where it gets kind of the global economy. Those drones are powered by computer chips that are made in the United States and Switzerland and Western Europe. So, yes, we, we, we love to talk about national borders, but there are many rich people in all these different countries who are profiting off of all of this. And uh, yes, I, I do not I, I do not support Iran or <laughs> North Korea supp- supplying drones to Russia. But Amer- I think the Americans and a lot of Western people should realize it's not just the drone. It's the computer chip. The, it, it's fuel. It's all this stuff. It's the allowment that in this century, in this decade, at this time in history, that war which is the criminal intent of greedy fucking men in positions of power to kill and dominate not only the planet, but anybody in it who disagrees with them, that this still goes on. That is the frickin' issue. And it's not just Iran and North Korea and Russia. It's so much of the Middle East and it's so many other places too. And that this still goes on, which is why we need a frickin' pussy riot, which is why for 30 years I've been saying, women, get your guns, which is why I don't even know what the solution is because all we can do is protest and hope it spreads the point. I totally agree that uh, it's very necessary to speak out every day and protest uh, as loud as we can, because there is a lot of Western hypocrisy who was selling all, all this time, all this decade, we were protesting. They were selling police ammunition. They were selling accompaniments for military poisons to Russia. And they were actually buying gas and oil. Uh, avoiding uh, avoiding all of the words of human rights organizations and us. So yeah, it didn't start at this. Uh, it didn't start at this February. It's actually started a long time ago. Do you ever feel a sense of impotence? Because as loud as we scream, and as much as we release, I mean, we have to hold hope that there will be a, a change sometime. But it's not now. Why is it not now? Uh, I think every small change is actually important. So it's very important to see the small steps which are already, you know, in process. But of course, it's not enough. But uh, it's moving. It's moving. It's just totally slowly. And we all should remember that the price for this uh, slow movement is actually human lives because without support of the west ukraine will not win this war and if ukraine will not win this war other countries will be attacked because putin is like a crazy maniac and he turned uh russia to terrorist state and he needs to be stopped well what's so uh, what's also terrifying about the fact that that it is a terrorist state i feel so is america and many other countries but we're just a little bit more subliminal about it is is that For instance, the equipment is so old. They're recruiting prisoners. He doesn't realize that the people don't want this. It doesn't matter. It's what he, it's what the king wants that continues this insanity because people around the entire world don't want war. They don't want any of this. So every small step is important, but I don't know what the solution is because, I mean, we have to just burn it all down and start again, which, you know, you burn things in your video. <laughs> My tongue burns in people's ears. That's that's, that's where we start. Uh, our our video includes a lot of documentary uh, footage, which uh, I personally was uh, choosing. And uh, in the words "Let Moscow Burn," it's actually uh, activists who are totally unknown in the West. Uh, they were burning, uh, recruiting army offices around Russia. So there were around uh, 20 recruiting army offices burned. And that was made by just local people who never done anything political before. They were just totally angry about this war. They didn't want people from Russia to die. They didn't want uh, this army to recruit new people. So uh, Russian 
a lot of Russian cities don't, doesn't have any electronic you know, system. So everything is on the paper. So if you burn it, it's completely actually burned. Uh, so we admire these people a lot. And that's why we included them to, to, to video. What, what is your... Um... What is your physical um, movement situation now? I mean, are you, I mean, of course there is a, essentially a target on your back, but you are now not in Moscow. You are moving from place to place. It seems outrageous to even go back to Moscow because, I mean, if you could be arrested in a taxi and sent to the police station, correct? I mean, do you feel safe anywhere? Do you feel safe, for instance, in, in Iceland? I know you have friends and fans in some places that will house you, but do you, do you, A, do you feel safe in any place? And then B, do you also feel you have to go back to Russia? Um, I, I don't think that, I mean, I, I don't think, uh, think a lot about my safety because kind of, it's not the moment because, I think me, our collective, and thousands of Russians who are now uh, helping Ukraine uh, just want one thing, to, to win, to make Ukraine win this war and do everything what we can for that. Um, I mean, it's just, I never personally felt what Ukrainians feeling now. My family is alive. My house is, you know, it's standing on its place. And I have no idea what, how, how big the trauma is. So I can just like make a small impact to support and that's it. Um, can, I, can, can I ask you this? Because this is where I get confused. Didn't the war start in 2014? And then now it's the, the massive military invasion is now recent. But 2014 is when uh, the prime minister bailed out of signing the treaty with uh, the agreement with the West, with the EU, and decided to go with the Russian, uh, I forget what it's called. I don't know all these organizations. Decided Crimea. To... Well, no, bef right before Crimea. Right before Crimea, when there was like... Um, the re re revolution, revolution of dignity, they called it uh, in English. Uh, My yeah, February 2014. Yes. Okay, I, I will tell you. So it's very simple thing. On December of 2013, that was uh, a revolution of independence in Maidan, in the center of Ukraine, in Kiev, and they won. So they kicked out the puppet President Yanukovych, who was like a puppet of Putin. He, they kicked him out from the country and were celebrating the glory of revolution. So that's how the new history of independent Ukraine, independent from Putin, started. So Putin was very angry about this revolution. That's why two months after, in February of 2014, he decided to annex Crimea. Right. And he, he actually did it. He did. He did it, so yes. He, he did it, and that was almost no response from the West. That was very slight sanctions, like weapon embargo, for example. That was actually even these uh, weak sanctions were avoided by several countries, like Germany, France, and Italy, were continued continued to sell weapons to Putin, and uh, and and that's it. And this is a result. Eight years after they decide to continue, they were really hoped that in three days they will take Kiev, like Crimea, that will be very easy and there will be no circumstances after that. And they failed. But isn't this, uh, a del isn't this delicate because uh, Germany, and especially the development of Nord Stream 2, the pipeline, really, they're worried that they're, they're dependent on Russian resources, gas and oil, and so it's a tightrope dance. You know, they don't, they're kind of paralyzed. People are making money and arguably they don't want revolution in their own country. If suddenly people have no heat or gas in the, win in the winter. I mean, I'm, these are just talking points, but I'm just curious your, no, about your opinion. It's, okay. it's, not, it's not like this. It's not like this. Eight years were totally enough to get rid of Russian gas. That was totally huge amount of time, you know. Because now, now they, they did it. 
in uh, nine months. And that was much more traumatizing than if they did it in, in 2014. They just did not want to do it. They didn't want to do it because they were captured by Russian capital, by money of Russian oligarchs, which they put a lot to the West. So what, what they are doing, they, they kind of, they're stealing money uh, from Russians, from Russian resources, from the whole country, and put this money to bank accounts in Europe and the United States. They're buying uh, the most expensive houses, opening a bank accounts. They, you know, relaxing in the, in the most uh, Super yachts. expensive yeah. Super yachts. Yes, and and it it was not a secret at all. That was totally, you know, known in the West. That was just accepted. That was just accepted because situation was not so black and white. Because there was almost no uh, rebellion in Crimea. Because the country was just after revolution. They did not have time to prepare, you know, for Russian invasion. They lost Crimea, but it doesn't mean that you know that that was fair and that was legal. It was a, it was, a, it was illegal. It was, it, it was illegal. Yes, uh, based on well Geneva Convention, all types of conventions for sure. Um, but what it's kind of interesting this the chess match of geopolitics. Uh, I mean, Saudi Arabia and the United States are going to benefit also considerably if if. If, if Russian oil and gas is kind of peace is not profitable, but war is an extremely profitable business is, is really brought down. And, and of course, now, uh, you know, uh, the biggest competitor with the United States in the EU, who are our allies, is Germany with their manufacturing. Now, German products are going through the roof because they don't have the same access to resources. So I don't even know what's happening. There's so many moving parts here. And there's so much money being made or not being made, um, but all, Janet Yellen was on the uh, the uh, uh, was on the news the other day, and she's kind of managing this. Russian oil and gas is still being sold considerably right now, just to keep the global economy going. So that's another fine dance. Uh, what do we do about that? If we if if the oligarchs are still making their money. Well, it would be nice if we all just freaking went solar, wouldn't it? That would like cut out a lot of this crap that war is based on. Hello, that's a pretty simple solution. That's not real. That, that's just being shot down because who's going to be profiting from this? A lot of things which uh, you know seems to be kind of impossible to do. Actually, it's possible to do them. It's just uh, you know people on the top don't want it and. Like I say, who's going to make the, the money out of solar when they're all making the money out of gas, oil, destruction, and then reconstruction? These are the benefactors of war. This is especially why America is always so interested in war. Not only selling ammunition, parts, you know, weapons of mass destruction to other countries, but then when it's devastated, going in and rebuild as we did in Vietnam and then rebuilding into a tourist, you know, trap. They're not thinking about tomorrow or the next day or in a, in a month or in a year, the way that the average person thinks, am I going to be able to eat tomorrow? Am I going to be able to heat my house? They're thinking, what can we do after we've destroyed a fucking place to then profit from rebuilding? building it and there we go again and this is just the nature of what has been going on for freaking ever so let's say russia aborts and leaves um ukraine uh they they, they, well, let, they let's hope russia aborts <laughs> putin all right well all right so, so let's say let, let's say that happens ukraine still has then what with ukraine and and i mean we have to re, there's rebuilding but ukraine has huge corruption problems themselves and it's things aren't so simple i mean pe people <laughs> they've, they've been actually I think, unfortunately things are very simple uh at this at this point uh, at this point uh, things are very simple it's not uh, of course the first thing of course russia to leave ukraine uh russians all our russian soldiers to leave ukraine but afterwards it should be international war tribunal about all the war crimes which were done, because now what they are doing is a genocide. And it's very, it's, it's like 100% clear genocide of Ukrainian people. And it should be an international war tribunal like Nuremberg 
war tribunal against Vladimir Putin, against all of the propagandists, who are actually every day, I don't know, do you know this uh, or not, but every day through all uh, TV channels and media resources, they are calling to nuclear bombing of Western countries, especially United States. And all the army generals who are actually torturing and killing people. So all of them should be prosecuted internationally and all the people who suffered from them should be witnessed. And this is how it should be. Without that, it's very, I mean, without that, it will be just repeated. Again well, and, and, again. and excuse me, when because... was the last international war tribunal against these, um, you know, these uh, multinational every country in the world with war criminals after in the Nuremberg trials? W w Tim, do you know what was the last what was the next tribunal and why is there not tribunal? Because everybody is freaking guilty because America is guilty as well. So who's going to stand up and say, I want a tribunal against these genocidal patriarchal male maniacs who's going to stand up and say that uh it's not a question uh like of of guiltness it's uh, a question of of trust and i think ukraine as a country who suffered and who've been attacked should choose where it should be they, they should be prosecuted and this is fair and um, I mean, it's just, it's very, it's very hard to explain, but uh, for all the people who are from Russia and who were protesting in Russia, it's very clear that this is a crazy try to rebuild of the dead, the, rebuild the dead body of, of Soviet Union and trying to build the new kind of, kind of empire. And that should be stopped because it's not a question of Ukraine. They want more territories. If you will just listen to their propaganda of what they are talking about this war, you will hear that they want Kazakhstan, for example, the North Kazakhstan they want. Uh, they want to attack Baltic countries. They want to attack Poland. Uh, all of this is, is, well, it's a crime. Well, and and, and greed, will greed, be... greed is one of the most... Uh, predominant attributes of any war. It's greed. I want that country. I want those people. I want those resources. I want that money. I mean, that's the that's the issue. So, Masha, I'm curious what your what your opinion is or insight is on this. And it's always been a mystery to me. And I remember I was in Brussels once, hanging with uh, a fan. Uh, we're musicians, so a fan of mine who works in the EU. The mystery of just Putin's head. Um, Russia could have really been a major force going into the 21st century. It could have been maybe the leading force in the EU if they just adjusted a few things and they would have been this major global power that they seem to want to be now, but yet they want to go back a couple hundred centuries in the, the approach and the, and the way they're going about it. Why do you think he's doing it this, this way? It's very, it's uh, very simple. Also, if you will just uh, listen of Vladimir Putin's answers, which he was giving all this time, uh, he wanted to rebuild the Soviet Union. And when journalists were asking him what is what is the worst thing which happened with Russia in history, he said the collapse of Soviet Union. So he he has a Stalin as a role model. He uh, promoted this war as a uh, like as a continuing of the second world war uh and he's just using the 1945 as as a platform for his crazy maniac ambitions and this is very cynical because people who were fighting in the second world war that not so many of them alive but they are living in the like in the worst conditions you you can imagine, a lot of them living without hot water, without normal electricity, without clothes, in in the most like poor level life you can imagine in Russia. And at the same time, they're using this Second World War for for the crazy ambitions. And this is not question of their 
let's say, greed or they want resources or, or money or, or something. It's not about money. It's not about uh, resources. It's the just pride, a question. Or, the pride of owning. It's a, it's a question of, yes, he, he wants to be a Tsar of empire and he wants to rebuild the empire. And uh, after the collapse of Soviet Union in the 90s and in the beginning of 2000s, uh, Russia really, like Russia had a time of freedom and a lot of people were really dreaming and doing working for being a part of Europe. A lot of human rights defenders and uh, dissidents who actually became, you know, public figures work, were working to be, to, to make Russia European country. And just in, in 15 years, in 20 years, uh, he crushed all the work. And yeah. Well, he uh, crushed the work that was done. He crushed the hopes of the people. He's killed his own soldiers by sending them to war. And the thing is, what people, as you just said, the people who were, for instance, in World War II, living without money, without heat, without water, without food, it's the same in America that the, the veterans of Afghanistan or Vietnam are the, the largest amount of homeless people in America. Like they, first of all, if you're not dead by going to war, if you're not killed, if you're not psychically damaged, these are killing another human human being when you come back they give you nothing anyway so why anyone decides to go and actually kill other human beings for the sake of the pride of their country i don't understand how still men have this idea in their mind that that is something to aspire to because you will be broken you will be battered you might be killed and if not you're going to come back and nobody's going to give a fucking shit not the veterans administration in america they probably don't even have one in russia so we are not damaging not only the people that die the people whose lives are destroyed in war that we dominate but the people that come back from war it is a no win never win never did win situation driven by maniacal men out of pride out of greed out of ancient ideology that started in the freaking cave and this is why the war is never fucking over in my opinion that's what i know masha i wanted to ask you this because it's very strange to me like what about edward snowden taking up residency in russia i mean this is is so contraire, contradictory. Like here is somebody exposing the truth about America and then Russia takes him in and doesn't, I mean, it, well, how, what are your feelings on that? It's so weird to me. Um, I also have very weird feelings and uh, it, will be, it will be really cool if the United States will provide an amnesty for Snowden and for Assange as well. Um, Oh, yeah, that will be course. just a, it will be just a cool gesture, you know, uh, because uh, I I don't think that Edward Snowden is actually a fan of Russia. I think he just didn't have a choice, because uh, he was like in 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 worldwide prison, which is hard. When again, it's like you don't shoot the messenger. Well, yeah, you do. You you incarcerate them. I mean, that's the American way. I mean. Uh, Assange and Snowden, all they were doing was revealing the evil doings, and therefore they become enemy of the state, which well, is ridiculous. Uh, who, there was a British spy in, in, in the Cold War who was a double agent, and he, and basically he was selling a lot of Western they were journalists. Secrets. They weren't agents. No, 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 no. I know, I know. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of digressing here. But what I'm saying is, I, I wish I remember what, which, what his name was. But basically, after helping out Russia and all that stuff, and then they basically gave him amnesty, or he was in Russia. Then he's like, I, I think I made a big mistake <laughs> because basically after helping out, he was like suddenly there and he's like, they treated me like shit. And basically it was, it was a horrible experience after doing that. That's besides the point. Let, let me ask you this. Okay. You're very politically involved. You're, you're running around the world. It, your integrity based on what I've read is, is, is very high. When you got international attention, particularly from the West, and all the commodification of just pop culture, how did you keep your head level? Because, you know, a lot of people, young stars, and you were very young at the time, they kind of fall trapped to the, the feedback chamber of uh, the attention, the fame. Um, how did you keep your level head? I mean, I don't know if there's one way. And, and 
what did you feel when you're suddenly bombarded by all this Western attention and commodification of, of, of activism and, and art? I think I, when I received uh, international attention, I, I was in prison cell. Uh, and I, I received this international attention through uh, pieces of paper which my lawyer brought to me. So, of course, that was completely unpredictable and surprising. But uh, it's just, I mean, it gave me hope and it gave me some power to to rise up inside prison because I, I was uh, I was fighting for human rights of other prisoners. I had four court trials against prison administration. I won, I won three of them. And uh, all of that I, I, I made because I understood that 90, let's say 97% of other prisoners doesn't have uh, this amount of support attention and support which I have so I was like you know of course I was the only political prisoner that time but uh, I was I, I was feeling that I'm kind of privileged at this point so I, I should use what I have to to help to change the system and when when we've been released it was just it, it was a bit harder because uh, we were speaking and you know performing, I mean, speaking mostly uh, in a lot of places and in, let's say, big stages, etc. And at the same time, Russia was imprisoning, Putin was imprisoning more and more people. So we, tr we were trying to uh, give this as an attention sign, you know, a warning sign that it's actually keep going and it's worse and worse. And in the same time, they start not only imprison people, but they start to beat us. So they start to to use physical violence. Uh, I was I was beaten three times by by the organized by political police Nazis, and uh, we were just warning actually all the world how as loud as as we can, and we were not the only one. So I don't think that I kind of had a lot of time to reflect uh but yeah if if you if you're knocking 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 and no one is uh actually answering it's uh sometimes um yeah sometimes it's hard uh, but again it's not reason to stop and did you realize the power you had once you got that international attention and you, you know it's you kind of have these guys trapped because it's not a good look when the curtain opens and there's old guys beating up young girls. And it, just like we're seeing with this Greta Thunberg right now. That it's was, just, I it, mean, her it, latest thing was so grand. It, this this it, latest it, takedown of this Andrew Tate was so grand, accidental by spotting where the pizza was from. This was so grand. Yeah. That, mean, that, that was cool. <laughs> that was a real good one. I mean, so. I mean, this is... This is you had the in a weird way you had the power and they didn't know what to do with you. But, but they, they still kept arresting well, and they still kept beating. And you're lucky that now with the latest video, um, Mama, don't watch TV. Well, excuse me. The only comment I have about it that I would have shat on Putin's head, not just pissed on him. But anyway, that's a great act. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my favorite phrases. Anyway, is that shit on his forehead? <laughs> Maybe in the next video. In a weird way, you have you have. You, you, there's like a little bit of a not a checkmate, but you 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 know these big powerful figures can't really do anything. What about vigilantism and and the general public, the right wing public that uh, fall victim to the propaganda and our Russian nationalists? Do they come? Do just uh, regular civilians that are real pro regular Putin assholes? Do, do they ever uh, threaten you and try to attack you? Uh, who? Just, just the regular civilians who are maybe pro Putin. Uh, the regular people never, never, never happened. Interesting. Okay. Mm -mm. Because, because, you know, with, with the American nationalists and right wing, <laughs> the people do get violent in the name of, say, Trump or something. Of stupidity. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but, but it's interesting. You, so, so the people never threatened you. Never. I mean, you, uh, R Russia is not United States. It's actually, it, it's a different place. So uh, you should understand that actually almost all the people hate Putin. Nobody loves him. There is no 80% supporters of Putin. It doesn't exist at all. 
everyone understand uh, that this power is corrupted, that these people are thieves and maniacs. People just, uh, I mean, the the money which was put it to to secret service and to all the uh, all the police stuff, it's so big. So it's just, I mean, it's almost impossible to make uh, a massive protest. The, that that's it. But uh, it doesn't mean that people love Putin. It it it's just not like this. And uh, well, he loves himself more than enough for all the rest of the people that fucking hate him, because basically the entire world is against this asshole right now. And he doesn't realize it. If he was wise enough, he'd slit his own throat and go out with whatever dignity he has left, which is none. Kill yourself, motherfucker, before somebody else does. And he should. And hopefully he will die of the cancer or Parkinson, whatever he has that's shaking his very nerves. So do you think I wish death? Yes, I wish death. Uh, my gun it doesn't have a long enough reach. I don't have enough. Bullets. If his back's against the wall and he sees that he's he's going down, he's he's about to die. More delusional. Uh, do you think he he would take the nuclear option? Do you think he would do something that psychotic? Um, I think uh, there are thousands of methods to uh, keep trying to destroy Ukraine without. Uh, nuclear weapons because uh, last time and it's actually still going they they crushing the energetical system with uh, usual Iranian drones and it's quite you know it's massive um, damage actually so I don't think that you know it's kind of it's just manipulation I mean, they they just showing that, come on, we have nuclear weapons and we will bomb all of you, etc. So you have to give give up and, and stuff, support Ukraine. It's it doesn't work like this. They they understand that as far as they as they will use nuclear weapons, they will receive an answer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And and then we're all and then we're all see you see you on another plane. Uh, colonize the moon quickly. We need to go somewhere. Yeah, but but if if he's gonna die no matter what, then you know well, they're all I, gonna I, die no matter what. But I I mean you know I. I I I, I, ho- I have faith that he won't push the button. I have faith he's going to die sooner than that. I think he, like most politicians, are completely demented. They're out of their freaking minds. They're taking money from all sides. They're catering to 1% of the population. They're megalomaniacal maniacs. They're genocidal. They're earth and female haters. And they should all just be fucking exiled, taken out, and they should be sent to the fucking moon. To the moon! <laughs> what what what's your and a what, perfect planet female what's, planet what what's your gut feeling of course there, there's been trials and and how putin has infiltrated american politics uh do you do you think it's deep and vast i mean every country that's that's a player tries to, it turns out tries to influence all types of elections around the world this is and they unfor- do un- un- and they do unfortunate truth the united states definitely does um how much do you think Russia has influenced American modern politics? Russia um, influenced. Well, there's uh, a lot. Well, yeah, because there was there was trials about uh, Trump uh, and cahoots with uh, Putin and 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 Russia. Do, I mean, do you have any feelings or thoughts on that? Um, I can say that uh, Trump was the only president uh, of United States which. Uh, which Russian Russian propaganda didn't hate, right? So, so and... something's different. Suddenly, you sort of wonder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, look, look that, so... those re- those reasons go back for quite a few a uh, few decades. I mean, it could go back to the Miss Universe con. It could go back to Trump wanting to build, you know, Trump hotels in Moscow. It just goes back to two criminal enterprises respecting each other of the highest order. That's it could be it, that or too. the lowest order. I don't know. It's- so Ma- Masha, so Masha, outside of all your activism, outside of your art, or, or and it could be included, it could be involved. What do you do for joy, laughter? Uh, what do you do to just just really do a hard laugh, like a gut belly laugh? Like, what, what do you do for just uh, joy? Just just yeah, 
how do you enjoy the? Yeah. What? What? What is? What is? Do you have? You have hobbies? Do you? Do you just have friends? You watch stand up comedy? I don't know. I was watching a squirrel. Sasha Baron Cohen for laughing. He he's quite funny. Oh, he can be pretty brilliant. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Um. Yeah, I mean, I. I don't think that I'm kind of so so different um Masha I think it's very important especially when we are besieged and overwhelmed by the bullshit of this reality in this time and place that wherever we can find pleasure joy beauty happiness comedy we have to fucking take it we deserve it so whatever that is and wherever you can find it we owe it to ourselves to seek it because it's the only true rebellion as much as we do rebel, because if they if they manage to make us miserable every minute of the day, the enemy has truly won. So we have to laugh. We have to love. We have to see beauty. We have to enjoy and fuck you motherfuckers who are never going away. This is the way it's always been from the cave forward. And we're just not going to take it anymore. But I, in the meantime, all we can do is protest. All we can do is make people aware. All we can do is make art and piss on Putin's face or shit on his forehead. <laughs> this is a good statement I'm glad to I say I'm making you laugh see I'm spreading the joy as as somebody who focuses on the negative I like to spread the joy as well I have to I'm a comedian what can I say we crossed paths with, with, with Anton in, in Zurich s- super briefly but you were on a world tour with Pussy Riot do you guys have uh, you're, you're maybe on a little winter break but do you have a continuation of the year of touring uh yes we we actually in process to organize uh the 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 continue uh of of the tour and also i was uh, we made uh, in iceland uh an overview post riot exhibition so that was kind of very well uh how to say it accepted uh and washington post came from from united states to to cover it and so was that up- was that videos and artwork and and poetry? What what did that exhibition consist of? So of course that was a footage of our actions during ten years, videos, photos, uh, statements, uh, but also it contains uh, fake news about us. That was uh, that contains uh, uh, police protocols, court protocols, uh, everything which actually the state provide us after every action. And uh, our graffiti works, which we were doing uh, during the tour and the nights in different cities, anti-war graffiti. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of it. And so, some... multi multimedia I- I- existing within all of the different realms that you protest in, from music to video to graffiti to fake news about you to the real news. That's fantastic. That should be on yeah, the because... tour. Yeah, that we we are working on to bring it uh, to US as well, because you know now it's uh, unfortunately not so clear that Russia was uh, protesting all this all this time against Putin, and a lot of people, a lot of oppositioners and artists were aware that you know it's it's dangerous. It's not a joke. So we should be isolated and sanctioned all these oligarchs who actually just, you know, greedy pigs. And it's it's serious. They're well, killing and, people. And it, yeah, it's terrifying when even the oligarchs, the rich friends, once of Putin, are all I like every week being thrown out of windows, being poisoned. I mean, if they can reach these people with high security, of course, the average person or the non-average artist has a lot to frickin fear because they can eliminate anybody they want to. This is obvious. They're doing it every fucking day, every week. They're eliminating hundreds of people every day that don't agree with them. What's one more? What's another artist? What's another protester? Well, well, I have a a question, though. So if if you are an oligarch or even a Putin who's maybe a Russian nationalist or a neo-Soviet unionist, you're losing your culture, meaning like, for instance, one example is New York City has adopted two of Russia's massive ballet stars. And ballet is such a huge part of Russian culture and in history. 
And so if even if you're if your cultural heroes and these pillars of, of your culture and society are leaving, what are, what's what message is that giving? I, are, are, they, are these leaders just blind that everything's being eroded? <laughs> they are totally angry about uh, Russian, let's say, pop stars and famous artists who were, you know, so-called out of politics, but after the beginning of the uh, full-scale war, just, you know, left Russia and start to support Ukraine. They are really angry about that. So they didn't expect, they didn't expect so many artists just leaving the country and start to support Ukraine. So um, it's just, you know, you should you should know this system to understand that they never will say that they are wrong. They never will say that, you know, th that was a mistake, we failed. Because this is a system of dictatorship that, you know, it's not even, it's, it's a tradition which they try to, you, you said right, a new Soviet Union, you know, thing. And if in if regarding Nazi Germany world understood what happened, all the disaster and the whole Holocaust became really, you know, world tragedy known in the world, that what what happened inside Soviet Union did not, you know, did not was not analyzed. Right, for, a country, for, 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 for a country, for someone like Putin, who had so much pride in the Soviet Union, which there's so many poor people, so many things wrong with it, so much old machinery, so much lack of new technology because they are behind, because they are not supporting the progress. They are actually going backward in time. This is what's so astonishing, to have pride and backward having pride in going backward as opposed to which they could have done 20 years ago, really progressing and going forward. This is what's so astonishing to me. Like America has a lot of false pride. They think they're number one in everything. They're number one in a lot of the worst things possible, but still the base, other than the, how many homeless people we have and how many incarcerated people we have more than anywhere else in the rest of the world, they're still on the average, a base of a little bit more of a, a gentle existence and the Soviet Union had and has so much misery. And to be proud that you have not progressed beyond that is astonishing. The same way that it's astonishing to me that America has so much pride when we're the number one war horse. We have the most veterans who are homeless. We have most women dying in childbirth. We have an incredible amount of homeless people. We do not take care of anybody. Uh, we can't afford, uh, you know, medical help. We can't afford insurance. But we, we have this false pride because on the surface, it is better than the Soviet Union. And and well, Soviet Union, of course. So going to what you're saying, Masha, we, we talk about the Holocaust. How many people died under Stalin's grip? I, I estimate 20 million, right? Uh, yes, but also about uh, things which they are proud of. It's not only going back. For example, they are proud of repressions. They are proud of this tradition of poisoning people. Because no, Novichok scandal is not uh, is not a know-how. It's a big tradition of poisoning uh, people who are not agree. An opposition, yes, going from 1920s uh, to to here. So FSB is keeping a tradition from KGB, from NKVD, from Cheka. So this tradition they really really proud of. If you will, I mean, if you arrested in, in Russia and you uh, go to their cabinets, to their offices, you can see uh, a portraits, a photos of Dzerzhinsky, who was a head of Cheka system, the first uh, Lubyanka system ever in Russia. So they keeping this tradition and they are proud of that. And the same with Gulag. The Russian prison system is copying a Gulag. Is The sense is very same. That's why we have uh, so big level of second crimes. It's more than 70%. It's one of the biggest in the world. 
And uh, right, because they will to... find that you did a crime for anything, even if nothing. They will find a crime if you sound like the seeds. They will find a crime if you made one graffiti, if you made one video, if you said something, if you're associating with somebody. They will find that you are criminal because you are not for them. Yeah. We have a special department in police who was who is watching uh, social media, like in China, of the of all people and searching for oppositional stories of Instagram and prosecute people for that. So people uh, are prosecuted for Instagram stories, for Instagram posts, for Facebook posts, for tweets. For telling for the truth. For telling the truth. So yeah. now, so now where you are now and, and planning for your world tour, can you, will you, why do you go back? Can you go back to Russia? We'll see because it's, uh, it's all unpredictable. I mean, I can say only about my wishes because I, I did not, I do not, I did not plan and I do not plan, uh, to choose the second country as a current place of living. So as far as I can help Ukraine, I will do it. And war will not go, I hope, will not go forever. And uh, yeah, but in this war, we should fight with Ukraine. So if going back to what you're saying, if the, if the powers that be, uh, Putin and his people, if they'll never admit that they're wrong, if they absolutely, what's going to get them to stop uh, well, and who invading, after, invading and, who, and attacking and, and, Ukraine? And, and who after Putin is the other question. Well, this is also terrifying. <laughs> I mean, uh, this is also terrifying. The world, the international community will stop them. Because, uh, because this is the, the, the only way that, to them to be stopped. And... Uh, yeah, but, but if the, the propaganda is that the uh, the at uh, the outside stop Putin, I mean, don't you think it would have to be an, an internal uh, defeat of Putin that would be the the most peaceful transition? Peaceful transition. Well, I know. In Russia. <laughs> really? Well, well, so I, I I should I should say I should say the uh, path to least resistance with whatever that term is. Um. Uh, no, I nope, mean, not possible. <laughs> I agree. If, if you want short answers, then no. Fair. Uh, but yeah, they. I mean, they will do all what they can to con- to continue stealing money. They will never ever give a presidency, a chair, a power to anyone else. So, well, look, it's the same in America. I mean, anybody in a position of Congress or the presidents, they're all millionaires. They're not speaking for the actual people. None of them are. And, and in Russia, it's even worse. And the same in many other countries. And this is this is the situation the world is in. 2023, we have come so far technologically. We have come so far intellectually. And still, we are back in the frickin' cave. This is what is astonishing and blows my mind every fucking day. And that's why, Masha, we continue to protest and create art and not fucking shut up. And not only piss on these fuckers, but if we could, if only we could, shit on their fucking forehead with a dollop of poison in it so we could get rid of them all. But I don't think any of us have enough shit in us because shit versus shit, we're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> And as long as I can make you laugh, that's my joy for the day. Uh, Masha, we're winding up here. Can you, um, I, I don't know, is there any place we, people can go to to see where your tour schedule is going to be? Like how, what to follow? In, to, in social media? I, or any, anywhere on the internet. Anywhere on the internet. I don't know. Well, the new video is up on YouTube called Mama Don't Watch TV, and that's fantastic. And a lot of the other videos are up on YouTube. But how can people, you know, benefit from the cause or no? I mean, you could just send us a link to that anyway. That's, that's yeah, we'll, we'll post any links you want us to it's send. It's been a real joy speaking to you, my friend. Thank you. And I also happy. you. Really? I mean, we, I, do what, we do what we I can. I hope I will, I will come to two years because that that's kind of five years I didn't go there for... Uh, for different reasons. Um, so I'm happy when I will come. 
I'll yes, be, and uh, happy definitely, to greet you. Yeah, reach out, and if if we're all in town in New York, or maybe we'll, you know, Lydia and I tour a lot, so maybe we'll cross paths again in the touring world. But it would be a pleasure to all hang out. This is very uh, kind. We we appreciate your service to the world, and um, we honestly wish you the best. Because, uh, I'm uh, ending with goosebumps of joy and respect for you. And thank you very much. And I hope they never put you in frickin' prison again. Those that should be in prison should not be imprisoning us. I feel very lucky that they don't know what I say. So they leave me the fuck alone. This is the <laughs> Lydian spin with Lydia Lunch, Tim Dahl and Masha Pussy Riot. That's right. It's a fucking pussy riot. Fear of a female planet. Hello and goodbye. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you.